Cinderella's Royal Table is about as iconic as you can get when it comes to restaurants in Disney World. You're eating inside the castle at the end of Main Street, but are princesses in prime real estate worth the high price tag and headache of actually getting a reservation here? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Whether it's a bucket list dining experience, a proposal, a special occasion, or just a Tuesday on vacation, Cinderella's Royal Table has been on a lot of must-dine lists. This is the only way you're getting inside that castle, unless you're like a major celebrity or a contest winner who gets to stay in the Cinderella Castle suite. This is one of the toughest reservations in all of Disney World. The prefix menu is expensive and fairly limited, so we gotta ask ourselves, is it really worth it? Today, we're gonna break down all the pros and cons of dining at Cinderella's Royal Table so that you can make the decision that works best for you. We're gonna start with location. Located inside of Magic Kingdom, Cinderella Castle is literally the iconic centerpiece of the park. Walt called them weenies. Yes, yes he did, he called them weenies. It's the first thing that catches your eye as you start your journey down Main Street, USA. And Cinderella's Royal Table is on the second floor of the castle. It can be accessed by a grand spiral staircase. You will feel like you're about to dine with royalty and it may cause a little bit of dizziness. Now the staircase is fairly wide, but if you're experiencing any type of mobility issues or bringing small children with you, it may be easier to reach the restaurant by using the elevator instead. Now the location may be enough to convince you that you need to dine here. After all, this is one of the many restaurants in Disney World where you're not exactly going for the food, but for the experience. And Cinderella's Royal Table does seriously deliver on experience. As you might have expected, Cinderella's Royal Table is very castle-y. That's the atmosphere there with almost an old school sort of cathedral vibe. The restaurant definitely has a wow factor about it for sure with big vaulted ceilings, floor to ceiling windows looking out onto fantasy land. There are lots of stained glass windows, lots of intricate details throughout the restaurant. And here's something cool. There are 40 coats of arms on display in the castle, and each one is representative of someone special in Disney history, like Roy Disney, Marty Sklar, and Diane Disney Miller. Now, if you're dining with little ones, they'll get a wand or a sword and a wishing star souvenir to take home. But just a side note here, you can see some fireworks from inside the restaurant, but don't expect the full show from your table. Think of it more as sort of an obstructed view from the window tables. If you're looking for dinner with a view of the fireworks, opt for California Grill at the Contemporary Resort or Ohana at Polynesian Village Resort. But yes, overall the atmosphere here is very, very castle-y. It's very grand, huge high vaulted ceilings. It's impressive. Now, let's talk about characters. Normally, Cinderella's Royal Table is a full character meal. You will almost undoubtedly see Cinderella, after all, the restaurant is named after her, and there are several other princesses, usually around five at each meal. You can see Snow White, Ariel, Aurora, Jasmine, Belle, we've seen Wendy from Peter Pan here, but overall, it's a good mix. Now, Cinderella poses for photos downstairs before you go up to your table, in, you know, before times, normal times, she does that, so you'll wanna have your phone or camera ready as soon as you're called to your table. There is a photo pass photographer there as well. So if you've purchased a memory maker or photo pass package, all those photos are gonna be available to download in your My Disney Experience account. Before COVID, cast members could take photos with your camera, but that has not been the case since the parks reopened. So plan to have a designated photographer in the group to snap those pictures with Cinderella and any other princesses you may get to meet. Typically, characters do come to your table for you to take photos and get autographs. The character interaction here is usually really good. The princesses engage your kids in conversation, refer to people as prince and princess. You feel a little like you've entered the royal inner circle. But Cindy's is also usually pretty crowded and we've experienced kind of a rushed meal in the past when they're trying to turn tables over to keep up with the number of reservations. They'll often seat the restaurant in groups of diners so that several tables start and finish around the same time. This helps them make sure the princesses get around to every table because how they sort of do the whole princess thing is they announce them with like a royal regal announcement each time one comes in and then they make their tour of the tables and then they leave and then you're expected to leave. So you won't see the princesses twice unless you're kind of lingering. Now they're never gonna force you to leave, but it's definitely clear to anybody who's paying attention that you know once those princesses are through, you're supposed to be finishing up and leaving so they can reseat that table. So you're really only gonna see the princesses once if you do kind of what Disney wants you to do. So that means you're not going to get as much one-on-one -on -one character time as you would at a smaller restaurant like Garden Grill. But if you have princess lovers in your 
group, this is your primo option and your only option at the moment. Now, right now during COVID, we only get to see a little glimpse of Cinderella. There's been modified character meals. So you get to wave to Cinderella for a few minutes and you won't be getting an autograph or a hug or anything. You will get an autograph card that has been pre-signed by Cindy at the end of your meal, but it's not anywhere close to what it used to be. You're not going to see any of the other princesses right now. Hopefully things will go back to normal at some point and you'll be able to see multiple princesses. Character meals are typically a great way to see lots of characters in one shot without waiting in long lines, but right now it's not ticking that box and that can be a huge deciding factor for whether or not it's worth it for you. Now, when the rest of the princesses are back and character meals return to normal, this is still a great contender for breakfast, lunch, or dinner for the princess lovers in your group. But there are other options. Akershus and Epcot will let you meet many of the same characters, but the atmosphere isn't quite as iconic. And the food, which is Scandinavian inspired, might be a little too different for some picky eaters. Trattoria Al Forno over on the boardwalk right outside of Epcot also offers a breakfast with Ariel, Prince Eric, Rapunzel, and Flynn Rider. This is one of the few places you can meet some of the princes, though if you're looking for lunch or dinner, you're going to be out of luck here. They only do the characters at breakfast. And FYI, the characters aren't even there at the moment. You've also got 1900 Park Fair at the Grand Floridian, where you can meet Cinderella, Prince Charming, Lady Tremaine, and the stepsisters at dinner. Good if you love a buffet, not so much if not. Now, if you're a Snow White fan, you can also head over to Wilderness Lodge for storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White. I've talked about my love for this character meal on the channel recently. You get rare characters and a great meal. It is truly one of the best. Now, none of these other princess character meals are happening right now, but if they are around when you're making your Disney dining reservation, hello to you if you're watching this in the future, it might be worth it to compare a few to see which is the best fit for you. I've always said if I have to choose a princess meal and it's my first time at Disney World, I'll go to Cinderella's Royal Table. If I've been to Disney World before and I've been to Cinderella's Royal Table before, then I'm absolutely choosing Artist Point with Snow White. All right, let's move on to menus. I've already mentioned that this is a prefix meal, so you can pay one price for three courses, appetizer, entree, dessert. This is not an all you can eat meal though. Lunch and dinner are the same meal and the same price, so this is not an occasion where you can book lunch and save a few bucks. The menu is fairly limited here as well. You only have a few choices for each course, so I highly recommend checking out the menu before you book to make sure you like what's there. No point in shelling out major cash for a meal you're not even interested in. There are several beverages available that are included in the price of the meal, including fountain drinks, coffee, tea, milk, juice, and beer and wine are available for an additional cost. In the appetizer round, there's a daily soup, the castle salad, and charcuterie option. There are only a handful of entree choices, a chicken, a beef, a fish, and a vegetarian option. We've also seen lamb on the menu in the past, and there's currently a duck entree as well. And there are only a few dessert choices here too. We really enjoyed the Jacques and Gus, a deconstructed cheesecake. You'll also find coffee pot de cream and a very popular Clock Strikes 12 dark chocolate mousse, which is by far the most Instagrammable option and the one that's kind of never ever gonna leave this particular restaurant. At breakfast, again, you'll have your choice of beverage with mimosas, beer, and wine being an additional cost. The meal starts with an assortment of pastries, followed by your choice of entree, which again is fairly limited. In the past, we've had caramel apple French toast and steak and eggs. Typically, there's about six different options. Kids meals at Cindy's are pretty comparable to what you'll find across Disney World. They've got the staples of chicken nuggets, mac and cheese. They've also got a fish and beef option for your slightly older, or maybe less picky kiddos under the age of nine. We've never had a truly bad meal here, but nothing has ever been wildly exceptional. The food is good, but not stellar. Now it's gotten a lot better over the past few years, so fingers crossed for the future. And if you're focusing on food quality alone, you'll likely find that the price doesn't quite measure up to what's on your plate. But again, once you combine atmosphere, princesses, experience, eating inside the castle, location, then maybe it's going to be worth it. All right, so coming down to one of the most important pieces to consider, price. The ambiance and location are perfect, and when characters are back in full swing, this is absolutely a contender for the best princess meal. But here's where most people draw the line. It's the price tag. The meal is prefixed. Like I said, there aren't a ton of menu options to choose from. Lunch and dinner here is gonna set you back 62 bucks for adults and $37 for children. That's of June 2021 because the character experience is so limited. Normally, you're gonna shell out $75 for adults and $55 for kids to eat lunch or dinner. That's a whole lot of money if you're bringing the whole family along. 
You're gonna pay $55 for your three and four year old to get a meal here, and you're gonna pay $75 for chicken that's okay, but probably not $75 worth of tasty. Well, it's a three course meal, and the price does include non alcoholic beverages, but there are a lot of other options where you can get three courses, even in the Magic Kingdom, and it definitely won't set you back this much. When breakfast is being offered, the cost is slightly less dramatic. It's still a fixed price meal, only two courses, but it costs what lunch and dinner do now, $62 per adult and $37 for kids. No matter how you look at it, the price is definitely steep. And given the fact that you're only getting to wave to Cinderella from a distance right now, price may definitely be a huge factor in deciding to eat here or skip it. Now, another thing to mention, this is a prepaid meal, meaning you pay when you book. This is true even if you're on the Disney dining plan when it returns. You'll pay when you make your reservation, then be issued a credit back to your credit card if you're using Disney Dining Plan credits. Now, this could take up to a week to happen, so if you know you're going to need to use that money for spirit jerseys or ears, keep this in mind. If you have to cancel for any reason, it could take up to a week to see a refund, usually three to five days. And the cancellation policy here is different from most of the other dining reservations you will make. If you don't cancel at least 24 hours in advance, you'll lose the whole amount that you've paid. At other dining locations, as long as you cancel the day before, you won't have to pay any penalties. So don't let this one get away from you. Oh, and by the way, in the before times, the cancellation policy was even different. I think it was a 48 hour cancellation policy. So definitely something to check. Now, if dining at Cinderella's Royal Table isn't quite special enough, Disney does offer some upgraded options that you'll only find at this restaurant. There is a signature celebration package, not currently bringing offered, which will take a bite out of your wallet to the tune of $200 per adult and $179 per child. You'll have a special meet and greet with Cinderella and Prince Charming, and you'll have pretty much the same meal as everyone else in the dining room except dessert. You'll get to attend the Magic Kingdom dessert party as part of your meal and get priority viewing for the fireworks. Also available at this restaurant is the Magical Proposal Package. This package includes your dinner plus a special white chocolate Cinderella slipper dessert to aid in your proposal. You can also get an etched glass slipper and commemorative champagne flutes. These packages are somewhat customizable so the price varies. Now the package can be booked through Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings. All right, so is Cinderella's Royal Table worth your money? Cindy's is one of the most expensive meals in Disney World. You will be dropping $300 plus on a family of four, and that is going to be the toughest pill to swallow, particularly when other princess meals like Akershus come in at $10 to $25 cheaper per person. And think about it, $300? That's at least one more night in a hotel. That's three more park tickets. That's a lot of money. That being said, this is a bucket list meal. The real draw is the castle experience, which you can't get anywhere else. As soon as you step into Magic Kingdom, you are gonna wanna see what's inside that castle. You come for the location and the ambiance at this restaurant more than the cuisine, which is fine, but nothing to write home about. For the best experience, I'd suggest grabbing an early morning meal or late evening meal so that you can enter the park early or stay late when it's officially closed to other guests. This gives you the best chance for an empty Main Street to take some phenomenal photos, and if you opt for an early breakfast, you can be one of the first in line for rides when the park opens. So taking everything into consideration consideration, this is probably one we'd suggest waiting for characters to return, and even then, it's likely a one and done for most people. The price is steep, especially when you won't really get autographs from princesses. And even when this restaurant is offering the full package, it's not somewhere I feel I need to return to again and again outside of reviewing it every so often to help you decide whether or not to dine here. For the amount of money you'll spend at Cindy's, you could add on an extra day in the parks or upgrade your hotel. There's lots of things you'd be able to do with that 300 bucks. You'll want to consider what your group will enjoy the most and whether or not a meal at Cinderella's Royal Table beats out another whole day in Magic Kingdom, which is basically what you're choosing between. If this experience sounds like something you'll enjoy, then do it at least once. If you have a princess lover in your family, if you've got a child who wants nothing more than to meet the Disney princesses, then this is a great place to do it. You get to meet a lot of them at once. You get air conditioning. It's a set time, so you know you're gonna knock this off your bucket list. Yeah, for sure, do it. I always recommend people do this one time and then really think about whether they wanna do it again. Now, another quick question is if you'll do it before the characters return or not. So if your upcoming trip still means limited character experience, but it's your only trip and you really want to see the inside of the castle and say hi to Cindy, 
absolutely go for it. But if princesses aren't your thing or you'll be disappointed with the menu, there are hundreds of other restaurants in Disney World and we've got the info to help you find which one will be the best fit for you. Now, we absolutely want to hear your thoughts on this. This is a very divisive question. A lot of people are trying to decide if it makes sense for them to go to Cinderella's Royal Table or not. So let us know in the comments your experience. Was it worth the money for you? Not worth the money for you? Let us know what you think. Your experiences and your opinions hugely help other viewers of this channel, and we appreciate it so much. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.